all gonna end up unemployed riding around in this pile of junk. You're welcome to walk the 16 miles. Oh, I'll sit in the back of the bus. Like it kiss me up. You have identification on them? NASA, sir. NASA? I had no idea they hired you. There are quite a few women working in the space program. At least I can do is give y'all an escort. Three Negro women are chasing a white police officer down the highway in 1961. That is a God-ordained miracle. In 14 days, astronauts will be here for training. And we're shooting a human into space, and it's never been done before. With the launch of the Russian spy satellite, the president is demanding an immediate response. Running from the man. Space test group needs a computer. Catherine's the gal for that. She can handle any numbers you put in front of her. You and I are different from each other. This is about inventing the math. Because without it, we're not going anywhere. Yes, sir. That's John Glenn. What do you guys do for NASA? Calculate your launch and landing site. How could you be ugly in these white men? It's equal rights. I have the right to see fine in every color. Oh, not, not found it. If you were a white male, would you wish to be an engineer? I wouldn't have to. I'd already be one. Yes, it's an uphill battle. Get it, girl. But yes, who else is playing? I don't know if I can keep up in that room. Just make that pencil move as fast as your mind does. You've been gone for 300 hours. It felt like it to me, too. Colonel Glenn launches in a few weeks. We don't have the math figured out yet. There is no protocol for women attending. There's no protocol for a man circling the Earth either, sir. Every time we have a chance to get ahead, they move the finish line. I need to be in that room hearing what you hear. Within these walls, who makes the rules? You, sir, you are the boss. You just have to act like one, sir. Have lift off. We all get there together, we don't get there at all. In the fight of our lives, people. My gals are ready. We can do the work. More than 50 million Americans watching. I got a warning light. Go find Catherine. Colonel Glenn. There's a real fireball outside. It's getting a little hot in here. Black women take on the world over and over again and winning, winning over and over again. And it does happen in the real world, like every day. I think it kind of shows for very much intersection between being black and being a woman and how those things together can sort of prevent people from achieving, but at the same time showing the grace and intelligence and finding a way through and how that eventually does get recognized, even though it took 60 years for this film to be made, because this is 61. Um, in terms of real life, being Catherine Jenkins still alive um, and still being around, being fantastic. This film um, was nominated for Best Picture Oscar and by far made the most money in least the American box office. It was recognized at last. Um, so that was really nice to hear. Do you have something to say, Mikhail? I think one of the things I was trying to say um, when I made the introduction this morning was beyond these women as obviously exceptional mathematicians by anybody's standards. I translated that into saying that let's not put them on a pedestal unless we connect that to ourselves, unless we know that we all have something that we can do, we all have a contribution, we all have a life mission, we all have special gifts and special talents. And while we, 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 cannot, we cannot help but be um, just amazed at not only their intelligence, their sassiness, their, their ingenuity, their resilience, all of those qualities are within us. Yeah. And that's why I said if we look around at our families, it doesn't matter if it's a mathematician or if it's a mother. Those same qualities are in our culture. That's why we have survived. Yes. That is why, and we look at this and we say, oh my goodness, Look how horrible it was, and, and how many years ago was this? 61. 61 60 years. years. 60 years And ago. when I see it, I think, yes, that was terrible. Think about slavery. Think about how, what we have gotten through. What we have gotten through. People who are not like us are amazed that we are still alive. And succeeding. And succeeding. And achieving. So, so. The other thing I wanted to say, as just an aside, that 
you mentioned African American culture. African American culture is a combination of a number of cultures. African American culture has been impacted by Caribbean culture over the years. Over the years. So I hear a lot of discussions about African American culture, but I think that's an issue that people don't really realize that part of, I think, the gift of African American culture is that it has a lot of cultures from the Africa diaspora in it. In the same way that London is really, really interesting because it has a, it's, it's a global African city. So we put all those cultures together. Awesome. And then um, just to tie it to the film festival as well, I think watching that film and watching them women together really connects to the five ways of well-being. So just to remind you all, the five ways of well-being is to connect, is to be active, is to give and contribute, to take notice and to keep learning. I think that was so present for all of that. Um, they noticed, they took action, they did what they needed to do, and they looked to each other for that support. And together they managed to put people into space and on the moon. Like, you know, I can't imagine, I still can't imagine, I still can't go for it that Catherine did the maths to get someone on the moon with a pencil, you know, <laughs> with a computer that's barely working. Um, and um, Jonathan, I know you, you work for Mosaic, yeah. um, and you know, you work with mental health, so I guess I want to kind of, you want to expand on what you do and maybe, you know, having seen hidden figures, thinking about how that might connect through and how, you know, not only do they, like, in that oppressive society, they survived and thrived, cut for clothes and so on. Um, I like what Makeda said. One of the things that she said that was quite powerful to me is to remember that, all, okay, they were great mathematicians and they had, like, superior skills but it's also good to remember that we all have skills and um, that I think that's very essential to our well-being we all have um, gifts and skills that we can kind of do and to look at what is success for us really because success for us is not based upon someone else's standard it's based upon our standard what we class as successful for ourselves so for some people Success could be even something like giving up smoking. For some people, especially if you're um, having a really hard, um, say you've got a physical health condition, it might be walking a few steps. So it's important for us to look at what is success for us, and that will actually help our well-being. Rather than being measured by everyone else's standard, it's about looking at what is success for us as individuals. I think the other thing, um, Patrick mentioned um, racism and sexism, which hasn't gone away, and we all have stories about that. But what's instructive about the, the film is, do we let those things define who we are? Do we let ourselves be conditioned because of, and, and start to think of ourselves as victims? How do we find support? How do we go within ourselves when it just seems like it's just too much? How do we, how do we recharge ourselves? How do we find people who can support us and nurture us? And how do we keep the mindset that tells, so that we can tell ourselves that we can get through things? Yeah, and that's a really good link on sort of how mental health and well-being is such a permanent issue in a black person's life, in a black woman's life, black man's <laughs> life, black trans people's lives. It's always about trying to connect, trying to kind of keep notice and just be in the world and be active in the world. Um, I want to go back to the audience if you want to, yeah. Um, you want to put your hand up? Um, I'll try and get in as many of you as possible. Um, with that, yes. What we saw on screen for me, was flying above the obstacles, soaring, in fact, and keeping true to their mission, whatever they perceived it to be. Their divine, in this case, I saw it as their divine mission. And I think when you're being true to what is your authentic self and your divine mission, you do so and staying connected to your community, whatever you perceive that to be. Staying grounded, so that if you start going off, you know, script, as it were, someone is there to say, Fatima, you're getting a bit carried away with yourself. You're losing track of the program. And don't let other people's perception of you and stereotyping of you box you in and cause you to self-sabotage. Don't allow them to sabotage, that's what the film, I think, said, didn't it? Don't let them 
other people sabotage and don't self-sabotage. And for me, that is an important message when we're talking about mental health and well-being. Because when you feel like it's just pressing on your head and your heart and you want to forward your head but you feel that things are so heavy you cannot go on another step I think of that there, there used to be a thing saying don't quit and I go back to that don't quit because sometimes like we've seen there they sent Catherine away and had to bring her back when they recognise her true, true worth. That's all I'm going to say. Beyond inspirational. Thank you all very much. Thank you. That's powerful. Thank you. Do we have time for more people? Okay. Um, you were first. <coughs> I'll bring it to you. I love. I say I, I loved hearing you behind me the film the whole time. Sorry? I, I, um, like he like just like re reacting to the yeah. film the whole time. I loved it. Sorry. <laughs> well, I think it's important to participate. Yes. Um, we're a part of um, African oral tradition, so we react different when we see films, comedy, etc. But what I wanted to say, um, I haven't got mental health myself, but my son has mental health. Um, most of his life and um, what I wanted to say about this is that I've seen two films and I've got a disability I've got a heart, um, heart failure so um, what I have wanted to say about this film is that I've seen two films which um, depicted in terms of health and well-being um, white to what one was a white mathematician i can't exactly remember the film but he was studying at harvard university and um he had schizophrenia and they had that was a big box office film and sorry um, that was a beautiful mind a beautiful mind yeah and um i can't remember what the second film was but my, my issue is that it's very painful that it's taken so long to acknowledge, not just as women, but both as African people, I can start from the point of African people, to be acknowledged for um, being so great and being so unique. And there is many more hidden figures in different areas that we don't know about and I think we have to start we have to start to do that research ourselves because it's not going to be done and there's people right here in England Africans right here in England that have done great things and we don't know about them um, the, what the film depicted for me, two things. One, I'm not somebody who likes maths, but it's given me a great encouragement to know more about maths. And um, I am connected to a black woman who is a fantastic mathematician. Not, she's not known, but she's working with maths in the garden. And she's, um, uh, she's taught my children to pass their GCSEs. The other, the other issue is that this is the right film in terms of health and well-being because basically it shows you the um, not just a feel-good factor but it encourages that confidence. Can you imagine those women who are still alive, the, what they had to go through? That for me would have messed up my health and well-being in and and they kept it together um without any computers telephones or any added luxury so it's important that we try and find the confidence within ourselves to fight back and to realize that we can do whatever we can do thank you in fact, I would say after hearing our last couple of comments, there's some hidden figures in this room right now, don't you think?
So then we go and make sure we lift each other up. We record each other's stories. It's all about archives now. It's all about who gets to tell the story, where they find the story, where the photos are. Just you know, just keep, have that in your mind. And I think it was you. Was there anyone else who wanted to say something? Okay. Um, for, for me, it was um, a really moving, in part, um, film. But for a, a really poignant point for me was when um, the now supervisor was offered a role, and she said she's not going without taking the sisters with her. And, and, and for me, in, even in my own life, there has been black women of influence who haven't helped. And, and, I, and I think... Can I speak the truth here, yeah? yeah. Right. So, so when we talk about unity, yeah, and the sisterhood, the black sisterhood, we need to buck up our ideas, right? Because some of us like to be not only the, 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 the women, but the men, but because it was women, that's why I'm focusing on the women. Some of us like to be the only black in the village. Yes. Some of us, some of us like to, um, you know, keep other sisters where they are. And if we're going to move forward as a collective, they couldn't do it without each other. We can't do this without each other. And that is what I would take away from this film. And I've helped people in my, even in my own career, in my own profession, and I'm proud of that. And I don't expect nothing back. Because you know, it's the, sows, it's the seeds that you sow. So let's go and sow proper seeds in each other's life. Yeah? Thank you. Yes. Okay, there was one more person, and then I'm, I'm gonna go to more questions for the panel. So can you come up? It's not gonna reach. <laughs> <coughs> oh, are you, you going to come up? No? Yeah, yeah, I was saying come up. <laughs> are you too shy? <laughs> it's, we, all got, we all got things to say. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> I'm camera shy. <laughs> so I'm going to do this turn. <laughs> I've seen the movie before. And I saw it with my then eight-year-old daughter, and she oh, wow. was ecstatic. Mm -hmm. yeah. She liked seeing images of women that she's going to look like in the future. Yeah. I always say to her, you know, maths is important. And I heard someone say something I've always said, I like maths and maths don't like me. <laughs> so I was struggling in school. You know, it was like, girls are dumb. Girls don't know nothing about maths, so they're dumb. These are the things they should have showed us when we was in primary school. These are the women that we should have seen as young girls, because then we might have been inspired to not fear maths, to not just be secretaries, just be hidden behind, hidden behind the desk and there'd be no figures to represent what we earn, because we are in society, and I'm not just speaking about black women, I'm speaking about women as a whole. We are the nurturers. And if those women on screen hadn't stood their ground, hadn't raised their voices, because sometimes you have to raise your voice. I know we get slogans and, and titles about the angry black woman. Yeah. Men are business. <laughs> sometimes we just have to raise our voice to be heard. And we don't know the outcome. So. Because people say, oh, you shouldn't talk loud and just, just, just be quiet. No, be you, be yourself, yeah? That's what she done. She stood up and said, well, I've got to go all the way down there to the toilet, what do you think I am? And because of that, it made a difference. So had she been quiet and humbled herself and said, oh, I'm sorry, she might have still having to be run like a quarter of a mile to go to the bathroom. Yeah. So we as women stand your ground. Yeah. Be heard. Yeah. Don't be intimidated by the world that says you cannot, you are not enough. Because we are more than enough. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. <laughs> so, to think up some questions. Um, do you, I mean, the, the, I think the list is going to be endless, but can you think of someone right now who you think is a hidden figure who you want to see depicted and shown to people like us? Mm. This is for all of you. Mm put you on the spot. <laughs> I'll start first. So, um, about um, 
about 14 years ago, I did a campaign called 100 Great Black Britons because at the time when the BBC did a massive campaign to find Great Britons, they did not, they did not acknowledge black people existed and we've yeah. contributed. We've been here a thousand years, believe it or not. Uh, we didn't just come on the Windrush. We actually have been here a thousand years, even though the Windrush is important and the 70th anniversary next year is, is really critical. Um, and so the campaign, even though people voted for Mary Seacole, but what... Being, doing that campaign raised a lot of issues of other people doing stuff in the community. And what's quite clear is about mental well-being. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not recognised or valued either in the community or in the mainstream, that has an impact on your well-being. Because you want, you, we all want to thrive, don't we? We all want to be successful. So I'm not saying I'm not going to name an individual whatever it is. I see a lot of talent every single day every single day. The question is, does the talent believe in itself? That's the quest, first question. And is there a support network for that talent? And, we, and, the, and the point that was made is about, you know, I mean, at least it's a sisterhood. It's not even a brotherhood, to be quite honest. Well, that's not a story. But, um, you know, but yeah, seriously. So, I mean, the, but to me, there's talent, there is talent. There's ta I can see talent in, this, in here. I mean, I've worked with Makeda for many years. She's done some fantastic work in the community, you know, you know, all the time. And she's not the one to say, "What about me? What about me? I want them big me up, big me up." Where some people like to be bigged up. So we have to acknowledge people. And the sad thing about it is, um, uh, I, I go, I'm from Wolverhampton, so and when, when I hit, when I speak to mum, I call my mum and say, "How's things?" She said, oh, "I went to a funeral. I went to a funeral." So when I go up to Wolverhampton to see her, she's got a box of programs of funerals she's been to and you know and the sad thing about it when 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 someone passes on the only time you know about someone's contribution is when you read when, when when you read the funeral program why do you have to wait till someone passes away before you actually acknowledge and celebrate their life and have a party great you know so we have to do it every day so if you know someone that's doing something good in the community even if you just say you're doing a great job or just do something to recognise them. I think that's really critical and important. All of us have responsibility. Affirmation of, of all of us is important. If we don't have affirmation, it creates in doubt. So, you know, raise issues around self-belief. And for some of us, that might, that might just tip us over. Yeah? So that's a, that's a lesson for all of us. <coughs> they, um... Your mother's boxes of programs, that, that's a very important uh, document. That's what I said, and I said to her, don't throw it away, because we need to help her. <laughs> yeah, you'll you have to talk to her about that. Okay, um, that was a very poignant question. There, there, there is an, a, a book that um, uh, myself and my friend have not finished um, writing. Um, there was, there, there is, um, a, a, and, and she's not an African American, she's not a Negro, she's not a black. She's an African born in America, and that's what I usually tell people. And they say, oh, you're African American. I say, no, I'm an African born in America. She was one of my very important mentors. Her name was Queen Mother Moore. She was a staunch follower of Marcus Garvey. She probably only had a third grade education, but she had the, 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 the commitment and the brains and the courage. She's kind of like a cross between Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth. She, she was on the forefront during this whole 60s, 70s era. She was like the kind of elder African woman figure who, um, 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 who, who knew Malcolm, who knew, she lived in New York City. Um, and she came over here several times and um, 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 my very good friend, Escala, Mariam, um, and um, her partner brought, them, brought her over through the Tree of Life, and I supported them in that. And um, she's, if I, I'm gonna say this now, this means I have to do something about it, oh my gosh. No, she, 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 she left me with a box of tapes of her speeches, and she said, I want you to publish this. I still have the tapes. They've been transcribed. It's public now. That's as far. That's as far as it's gone. So you saying that, and it's it's been occurring to me recently, means that that, that um, we're going to really have to do something about that. One thing about her. Um, one of the things she said is that um, 
we have to learn how that we are suffering as, as a people, we are suffering from oppression psychoneurosis. This is a third grade education. Oppression psychoneurosis, a people who don't know that they don't know that they don't know. We don't really know who we are. We don't really know our greatness. We don't really know our potential. Um, um, we don't really know the damage has been done. Um, because if we knew it, then we'd do something about it. She was also one of the, the, the leaders in the forefront of the reparations movement many, many years ago. She said that when Kennedy made that, um, he had a, a, a speech where he said, she had written a letter to him about reparations. And she said after that, he came out with that saying where he said, don't ask what your country can do for you. <laughs> Ask, ask what you can do for your country. Well, she said she had already sent him the letter about reparations. So as far as she was concerned, maybe he was talking back to her. But she was really one of these seminal type figures. So, um, What's her name again? Queen Mother Moore. Her name was Audley Moore. So I won't, okay, I, I won't, I won't say watch. I, I know, I know, I know. So, um, okay, okay. I'm gonna have to get your help. Um, Jonathan? Thank you. For me, um, listening to that question, I couldn't think of an individual, but one thing that I did think about, I've been working while well, I work for a little while now, and the hidden figures for me are the people that I work with. The reason being that is because um, every, like, where, where I work, we're like a community of people, and seeing people um, get through their struggles on a daily basis and recovering from their mental health issues, for me, they are the hidden figures. <coughs> Because um, especially in some communities, people um, look at individuals that have mental health problems and they judge them straight away without even trying to understand what they're going through. And f to go through particular issues and still be able to get out every day, some people go into college, they go into work, and um, they achieve their goals. And for me, those are strong hidden figures that are like tremendously kind of unacknowledged. And especially within the, um, the kind of world we're in today, where people don't really acknowledge how important our kind of health and well-being is so for me that's it I just yes I just wanted to add something to that it's really interesting but health and well-being is often the definition the definitions change according to race and class they've done research to show that X number of people when they look at people who are running top corporates that they could they, they could call these people um, psychopaths yes. sociopaths yes. now but they can run corporations yeah. When you when you when you can when you can you can you can you can have all kinds of things going on. But if you're in a position where you're making money for people and you have power and you have privilege, all of a sudden then you're not a problem. You don't have a problem. The world has to revolve around you. So I think again this this question of of how let's let's not how what definitions we believe and what labels we believe are 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 very important. I don't know. I think most of us are fooling us. People who come to me, people who have never had a serious challenge in their life that just set them back are very, very rare. It's, it's like a continuum. And it's, it's not that easy to say when you start saying mental health and when you don't. So I think, I think there, there's a way in which these societies have, 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 devi have defined things that, that makes us believe that we are something a lot less bearing ourselves in the wrong way. Thank you. And I guess thinking to myself, my own opinion figures would be my family. Um, when I think back to my grandma, she didn't get education beyond 11 years old. The first time she used to train was to get to England. She got off at Plymouth rather than at London, had to find her way to London in a place that she didn't know. She did accountancy, she worked at the council, she was an ambulance driver and fixed up sick people. Is this stuff I'm only learned, I learned about the ambulance thing like two weeks ago. I'm like, why didn't she tell me? Um, she um, was a fashion designer and made all of the clothes for all six of her kids worked every day and in just and I think that's you know I think all you know we all love our, our parents and our grandparents are all kind of heroes to us and they're also hidden figures too because you just don't see them depicted in these movies and these books and we love them so much and that history is so defined and important that's kind of 
in terms of like in this whole world of hidden figures, that's kind of where I want to start because they're my people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was going to do a play. Go, go ahead. <laughs> so, so um, one of the key things about the pro, one of the reasons why these programs, these films are made um, around African American history, and you've seen more of these films over the last 10, 15 years, some of them get into the mainstream, and we don't have the equivalence here in the UK. And one of the reasons, and I'm sure McKay will back me, one of the reasons is that there's a very strong narrative in America of the African-American experience, basically. So, and because of the very strong narrative, you know, um, it means that you, you're more likely ever so often to have these films or books and publications and stuff like that. Um, so it's a plea to everyone in here. I do, I've done a lot of work over the years around trying to capture the, the histories of the black community in Britain and I've made films, I've done projects and stuff like that. Um, and what's missing is we're not capturing the history. <coughs> So if you're going back to your question about the hidden figures, it's about capturing the history of that, uh, the parents, grandparents' generation, because their history is not been documented, mm-hmm. apart from maybe f- a few celebrated ones, but for the vast majority and the tens and thousands of those people that came from the Caribbean, came from Africa, after, around the 1940s or even before, most of them, their story has not been documented, apart from when we see the funeral programs. That is it. So it's a plea that we need to interview the elders. We need to capture their stories because, as those stories, they'll be they're, they're all hidden figures, and some of them are stories that we need to know and to help us. So, as a plea, just to record stories, use a f- mobile phone, work with film production companies, interview people, write stuff down, wh- whatever way you want to do. Uh, j- just just to add to that, I actually think the only difference between the number of films in America and the number of films here is the fact that. There's, a bit, there's more money now there to distribute the films and to make the films. I think that's, that's the only difference. It's, not, it's no difference in terms of not having a strong narrative. I, I think both countries have, I think there's this, there's, there is a very strong na- narrative here. And I mean, I just saw Menelik's, um, um, what was Menelik's film DJ with Cassie McFarlane again? What was it called? That what, Lovers Rock one. No, not the, no, this, this is this is his early Burning an Illusion. Burning an illusion. I've ha- I hadn't seen that film in years. It is a brilliant film. It has stood the test of time. The only difference is is distribution, um, having the money to get it, to make a film and and the money for distribution. And now with the cost of chain, film filming filming going down, um, there are more opportunities. I think someone is saying something to us in the back. Oh, um, I was going to say, we, uh, we're kind of running out of time. So we've got time for one last question, and then I'll be forced to end it. So the person... No, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't ask, I just want to respond when you were saying about... Okay. Um, the, around making films here. Yeah. Um, and I think myself and McKay just took part in a film, which was a low-budget film by a Jamaican born here in, in, in London, about nine nights. It's called Nine Nights, and it's part of our ritual, Jamaican ritual. So it's coming, but it's where you get the funding from and how you apply for it. So don't be disheartened. I feel that there's going to be a surge, you know, of of black films coming. And I know someone else who is, is working on something. So I suppose to say that we have to be patient, <laughs> patient, it's all about the funding really and the money. And then we have to maybe tap into some of our quite well-to-do black, black entrepreneurs to get that funding. When they were making Malcolm X, they went to Oprah Winfrey, you know, Michael Jackson, etc. So we have to do the same here to tap in to the, the, the black community that has got that money. Simple. You might want to speak to Lewis then. Yes. <laughs> He's on his country anymore. He left. He left. Um, um, on that note, so let's all find Lewis Hamilton and, make him, and get him to pay make a film. And let's all know that there's a world of hidden figures in this very room, in our families. Thank you so much for coming to see the film. This is the opening night of Brixton Real Film Festival 2017. We've got a bunch of things left on. Um, I can't remember them all, but um, Carrie will tell you later. And thank you so much for our panelists. <laughs> Thank you for participating in the film. Um, let's all give ourselves a round of applause. Thank you so much.
Guardians. <laughs>